Hi, everybody. My name is Juan Melano. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina, uh, we, where we started this social TV company called Comenta TV. <coughs> um, today, I want to talk to you about being so, taking social back into television. As we all know, television used to be social. We used to gather in a room with a single content. Sorry, what happens? Uh, where you can access single content, few channels in a specific device, in a specific time frame, for example, the news at 6 p.m. on Sundays, and share their experience in a social way with your family, with whoever you were watching that, that show. Uh, but time changed things a bit, and we have color television and remote controls. Uh, but the essential thing is that we, we lost that social experience, because people tend to watch TV alone, um, at least more alone than before. Um, and that real-time experience uh, shift into an alternate time, like the water cooler when you go to the office and you, uh, where you could share with your co-workers what you have seen last night and you say, hey, Jim, did you watch the game last night? Yeah, it was awesome. Did you watch it? No, I, don't. I, don't, I didn't watch it, but I know what you're talking about. Because the system was still not complex enough so that everybody could know what you were talking about. But what happens when you go from two channels to over 200 channels? You go from this TV set to mobile television to watching television at the gym or at your car or at every street where you have a screen everywhere. Or you, you consume that content from um, tablets, mobile devices, video on demand, downloading it, streaming it, or accessing it for connected televisions that you can have access to any content, ever publish it online. Suddenly you have access to any content in, on any time frame, on any device, but you're still alone. You're, we are still not having that social experience that television used to have. And this gets even more complex than before, but this, because the system is more complex. There, there are more shows, there are more options, more time frames. So maybe you're watching a series, you're watching Mad Men, but your friend is watching The Wire, and the other friend is downloading movies uh, whenever he likes to. So that social connection, that zeitgeist, that's the word, uh, is lost. So this, what is social TV all about? About bringing back that social experience with a twist. That's when we became cyborgs, as Amber Case would say. Um, imagine for a second you have access to any content that was ever made, and you can isolate one single show, access it, and isolate it from the rest. So you can suddenly have an object, a social object, that you can share, discover, rate, and then add a social layer on top of it, and everything changes again. Because suddenly you, you can share and discover any content at any time frame, using any device within your social circles. You're sharing it with your friends again, with your family, with your co-workers. You, you have a sense, uh, think of Facebook, the news feed, but you know what's going on with everybody. Same thing happens with television. So you're not alone anymore. And this is happening everywhere. Viewers are expressing their emotions, because TV makes you express emotions. And they're doing it through comments in real time in the social web. This is an example from back in May when President Barack Obama announced the death of Osama bin Laden. 5,000 tweets a second were expressed during that time while they were showing on TV. Or an experiment from the MTV Movie Awards where people were commenting about their favorite stars. These are some stats from Milsing. In the US, 60% of the population, 60% use the net while watching television. Almost 30% are using it to um, comment about specific shows. In the UK, 72% of those under 25 are commenting in real time while watching television, mostly mobile devices. Imagine yourself, how did you feel and how did you feel that urge to express the emotions you were having while watching the final chapter from uh, Lost, for example, or from any series you were watching, or the London riots a few weeks ago? How did you feel while watching it? Did you share it in any way? Were you alone? Did you go to social networks to express yourself? 
probably you did. Most people are doing it. The challenge here is for social apps like Comenta TV or all those other companies I'm going to mention now, uh, is to put that shared emotions back into context, but back to the relation to the, where they belong to. Get Glue is one example. You can have miso, filo, tuner fish, and many other problems, um, many other applications. That what they are trying to accomplish is that you can express your feelings through a specific context, into a specific context. As easy as finding the show you're watching and checking in, saying, like Foursquare, hey, I'm watching this. I want to know everybody I'm watching this. And you can do it by touching a button or through sound fingerprints or inferring those check-ins from those social comments. That's what we're doing in I'm going to talk later. Um, and once you check in, once you tell the system, as Amber K said before, when you fit the system with that information, anything can happen. You have a lot of possibilities. For example, season tracking or building your own TV tracking experience, um, expanded with social comments, both from anywhere in the world or from your close social circle. Um, with some gimmicks like game mechanics that social apps use to engage you more and keep feeding the system. And while feeding the system, get some rewards like points and budgets that you in, in a way, exchange for social reputation because you, you're starting to top rankings from every show and you start, start getting um, awards for that. And if anybody is a gamer over here, you know that those two points that, are up, that take you apart from taking your friend out of topping the listings and being you, the one on the top, really engage you. And imagine you're a content producer that you can suddenly identify those prescriptors or those users mostly engaged with your show. Maybe it's a great opportunity to engage them more by inviting them, then, for example, to, to a casting call. Um, or find the social graph behind your show and say, OK, I can identify these social trends because all these people are watching Dr. House and all these people are watching The Simpsons. So you can have a social trend based on that. And even better, you can have a personal trend, because my friends are probably watching The Simpsons and not Dr. House. So that's something for the user to gain by using the system. And once you have that social graph, you can target specific advertising to them, to that uh, geographic, to that uh, age range, um, like promotions or contextual last. But mo most important, smart advertising that you can relate second screen content to what's been aired on, on, on TV. I'm going to talk about later as well. Uh, and that so same social graph, use it to, express, to find related content. Imagine you have all the shows again, and you have your, your friends curating your content. Um, Paolo Ambrosini will, will, will punish me forever if I say this. So touch curators and say filter, social filters. Your friends are filtering the content for you. And each one of these circles, say your family, your friends, your coworkers, can show you different kind of content that you can relate socially differently with each other. Think of it as Google Plus meets TV Guide. And this all takes us to the second screen possibilities to access um, related videos, complex infographics, or even if you're watching Mad Men and you want to know who designed Betty's jacket, you can do it. You, you can find it in a, in a second screen. For example, your, your iPhone or your playbook. Uh, you can see the content out there. Why are you watching television? Maybe it not makes that much sense to you now with Mad Men, but what about a tennis match where you can see the game and you can see all the statistics um, on a second screen? Or find the the recipes for the cocktails they keep drinking at Mad Men. Um, I hear some left over there. Uh, or some insights about the, the two teams that are, are in that game. Or use this second screen to engage your users with your real shows even further. For example, in a quiz show, you, you can use that second screen to have all the questions and have you play with your social graph and whoever wins between your friends or your family might get a better chance of being part of the real show on stage the next time. 
is a, a people discovery solution for content producers. And all the analytics these social apps are generating, all the data they are generating, can be used to improve the content you're, you're giving them and know better your user. And you might say, OK, these, these social apps are not used by everybody. Uh, and that's the solution we're working on with another companies. As far as I know, there's three companies in the world working on this, uh, Bluefin Labs, uh, Social Guide, and Commenta TV. Um, and is to go find out there all the comments, this 60% of US population, or 25, 72% uh, of under 25, they're commenting out there in Twitter, in Facebook, in any social network. Go find all those comments, identify them, relate them to a specific show, link those to a specific social graphs, and start using them to analyze it anywhere you, li you like, from trending topics to whatever you can find from that from that information. Like how many comments one single show is having on real time uh, while it's aired, or why suddenly everybody st they start talking about a single show, and maybe they, they want to know more about Justin Bieber. So give them that content through a second screen experience to very engage them into the show and maybe uh, improve the tuning. Or solutions for advertisers. Who, do, who of those who uh, drink Mountain View, Mountain View uh, who watch, watch these shows? This is some, something from Bluefin Labs. Or which other shows will these people like the most of those who watch my show? Suddenly, the water cooler gets sense again. You know what your friends are talking about because you're sharing them with them in real time. Uh, your TV habits, you're commenting with them in any time frame, you are recommending, recommending them uh, additional content. So this is the whole idea. Bring back that social experience into your daily life, your everyday life, and enhance with that possibility the, the experience of watching TV. Here are some companies in, working in, in the field um, that I use material from all of them. In check-in, you can find Get Glue, Miso, Tunerfish, Match, Into Now, Chatter. Uh, mostly of them are focused on the check-in experience. For analytics, Bluefin Labs, Social Guide, Wireset, Trender, Commanding TV is kind of a mix of all, so I put it over there. Um, I use some concepts by God. Uh, second screen experience is this additional content you can watch, you can consume while watching the show. Uh, TV Plus, Umami, Second Screens, mostly for advertising solutions. And Discovery Engine is like TV Genius, TV Guide, ITV. And it might show up like 10 more in the next few months because it's re a really hot topic. That's all I have to say today. Thank you very much. Hampus, I'm all yours. Turn your stage. So, thank you both. I think that was. I, I hope you felt as I, that somebody had a machine gun of interesting information and pounding that towards you. I, if you got 95% of what both the gentlemen got, you're also geniuses. So probably you have a, a buckload of questions, and if you don't, I actually do have. So I'll hand it over to you for questions, and if you don't, I actually do have questions, as I said. Anyone? Do you have two of the brightest minds on stage, and, and another guy, that's me. Uh, uh, to, to discuss really about what is happening with the user interfaces, what is happening with TV and social TV. So one of the things I want to I bring up first while you're thinking is actually, I, I'd like to start first by saying, do, are you seeing, I mean, you're running Comenta TV in Argentina. Have, have you, I mean, are you seeing the discussion about, for example, removing advertisement on TV, which would be a, a sort of a very, fairly uh, big topic, Thanks to tech second One screens. trend we, we know is, is happening is that regulations are making you, as a, a TV network, have, has every time less amount of advertising per hour. Yeah. So how, what it used to be, I don't know, 10 minutes, now it's 6 minutes. And we don't know how it's going to evolve in the future, maybe it's 3 minutes. So second, the second screen is a, is a huge advertising, monetizing opportunity for, for networks and content independent content producers as well. Uh, because you have access to an, a non-regulative uh, um, content uh, media. Yeah. Uh, 
So in that way, not only you can, you can have more advertising, but you can have smarter advertising because TV, especially the medium where uh, is, you don't know who, you're, who is watching you. No. It's, it's always general public. Yeah. And with all these tools that... Yeah, I, I really feel that second screen is going to make a big difference for me. I remember when I started wa watching the, the BBC's Sherlock Holmes, and it took me, I think, one show before I fell in love with Sherlock Holmes' wonderful trench coat. And it took me a long time to find out that it was way over my budget. But I would have loved to see that immediately, so I wouldn't have longed for it as, as long as I did. Well, something we are working on is uh, identifying everything that people are sharing in their, with their comments, within their comments, like videos or images or links to specific sites. And once you, you start seeing the trend, you can push them on top of the others and mm. show what people are really interested in real time. Mm -hmm. So if everybody's interested in what you were interested while watching that show, it would probably pop up. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually that, that's, that's the case. Yeah. Uh, people share that, that, same, that, that same feelings. Yeah. Mm. So, so a question for, for Rahul while, while waiting for brilliant questions. Do you think user interfaces should be invisible? I mean, would you want to come, in a, in a, come to a point where you were not recognizing the user interface at all? Or? Well, I think the, uh, I, I really don't have the right answer. And I think everyone has a different opinion on this. And uh, I think that from my point of view, the, a lot of people that I admire and respect, their views are also the same, is that the best user experience is where the interface becomes invisible. I think mm -hmm. a lot of you have heard that. But uh, I think uh, it's difficult to call... Uh, some certain user interfaces can do in invisibility, mm -hmm. and certain user interfaces perhaps need a little bit more visibility in order for the user to have control over that. So let's talk about medical interfaces, for example. Mm. It's difficult for us, it's easy for us to talk about uh, removing Chrome and just focusing on content when you're talking about TV as an experience or our Facebook experiences where we're looking at pictures, videos, songs, etc. But when you're talking about other kinds of interfaces where you're actually doing slightly more advanced tasks, I think that's perhaps where the instances where uh, our interfaces will find it a little harder to, go in, to, to become invisible without losing uh, our user's peace of mind, if mm -hmm. I put it that way. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, that's something that everyone has a strong opinion on. And uh, yeah, one of the things I mean, one of the things I think would think it would be interesting trend too would be if uh, an, if an application would actually have multiple interfaces. I think, for example, the calendar application which you, you also showed. I think a calendar for some people is really the classical calendar. I mean, you book doctor's appointments. Mm -hmm. uh, for some people, the calendar is actually a to-do list. Yeah. And if you look at how I mean, students are using calendars, or I mean, soccer moms are using calendars, or, or business people are using and calendars are very different uses. And actually, it might be different uses the time of day. So uh, maybe a calendar should actually have like three or four or five or 10 user interfaces, whether it's the same application. Yeah. So you could like switch and sort of say, well, show me my to-do list view instead. Today, we sort of sort it through weekly, monthly, daily. But I mean, I don't care. Show me my, like, like my to-do list or show me my, like, my <laughs> entertainment calendar or, sort of, uh, or my social calendar. Yeah. You know, I think we've been doing a lot of research uh, in recent times uh, with projects at Ergonomy Design where we've uh, gone and visited the homes of soccer moms and mothers, but for a different project where we actually uh, saw at least like 20 working mothers and how they use calendars and uh, planners in their, ha in their natural habitat. And what was interesting was that we were looking at all these amazing apps in our iPhones that enable mm -hmm. us to sort of quickly synchronize our task list with Notes and Elephant and Evernote, etc. And... We went and asked them, and they were all in London and uh, fairly sort of uh, well, uh, technically well blessed parts of the world. And they didn't, none of them used it. They were all using that refrigerator door yeah. with a paper list. Yeah. And that was their go to for the start. And then over time, they were sort of adopting and adapting to new technology and maybe finding a little one app that helped them a little bit more than the others. But uh, you're absolutely right when you say that uh, the same application might need to have different uh, faces in order to present itself differently to depending on who's using it. And I think that's what a session like this would really want to address. The thing is about the experience. 
-hmm. So the experience really is what is uh, modifying how the interface will look like. And if you need a medical experience, it would be probably really different from uh, an everyday use for a single user that has just passing by. Yeah, there are definitely, if you look at the London riots, there are definitely different ways of looking at the riots. I mean, there would somebody be very interested in, like, where are these people? I'm going to uh, crack their heads. And some people are like, well, well, what's this interesting phenomena? Right. So they're definitely interesting things. I think TV is an interesting, uh, or, or entertainment is interesting in that sense, that it's, it's very, very chromeless. It's, it's as Amber case about a book. When you watch TV, you kind of forget anything about the content. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, are you, do, do you feel that there's a risk that a second screen will distract you from the, from the content? Absolutely. <laughs> but that's, that's something that is happening. Yeah, I mean, it's true. something you cannot say is happening. It's not happening. So as is it happening, try to give it the best experience to the user that is already doing something like that. And maybe we, we are all learning along the way. Mm -hmm. and we have no idea where this all is taking us. But uh, probably it's going to modify uh, the basic fundamentals of television. And maybe for advertising, maybe through the, what, which kind of content you're going to be consuming in five, five years from now. Maybe the way you're consuming that, that content. We really don't know, but it's, we really have to walk this way to learn it. Yeah, because I think a trend generally is that you see that people have a sort of lost focus, that today people have five minutes attention spans. And I think there might be actually very interesting ways of, of presenting information where it might only be five minutes, and then there's something else. And this, I mean, not something else as a break, but I mean, information and so on and so forth. So I think there's definitely interesting. I'm thinking, uh, one of the things I would love to have a second screen on is whenever you read a, a book of a Russian author, I mean, read Anna Karenina and try to figure out who's related to who. It takes mm -hmm. you five minutes, and then you wish you had a second screen screen next to, to your book, would you like, who is this Mr. Gargoyle? Oh, these are cousins, brothers, and nephews. So, I mean, mm -hmm. the, while watching Dallas, I would need that on the second mm -hmm. screen. Like, who is this guy again? I mean, oh, yeah, okay. And he's it happens mother. all the time. I, I know this actor from another movie. Which other movie is that actor Yeah, that's from? true. Exactly. And you have it right there. The point is that as a user, you need to know where to look at. Yeah. And these apps is, are really helping users to get there. Maybe in five years from now, uh, all the TV networks will have their own social TV experience. Yeah, Maybe. Probably. Not, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Probably not because they, right now they are not, they know, don't know have the knowledge to do it, but maybe they gain it. I don't do know. Do you think social TV will change the way we produce content? I believe it's going to be a big factor. Well, right now um, it's a big factor. In the United States, for example, the use of hashtags is modifying the way the the live shows are interacting with the, with the audience, in a way. Mm -hmm. That's why they are they're promoting uh, all those hashtags mm, out yeah, there. Exactly, true. Um, so question. probably content producers will use that more in a more smart way at the end. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a question from the audience. Finally, somebody... Yes, hello, my name is Christiane Weile. I work with Digital Trends in Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, actually, you're going right the direction that I want you to go a little bit more, and I would like to have some concrete examples of what's television going to look like in 2015, 16, um, specifically news. What would a newscast, what would a program look like? What, what concrete apps, how would they be integrated? Is it, in the, is it on a different screen, or is it in the smart TV, or, or how do you imagine I this? Don't know. I don't know in five years. I don't know. Uh, I can tell you about what's going on now. And let's start just by the hashtag on screen. It's letting people know that you can communicate with the, with the show, in a way. Before you didn't have that option. Now you have that option to express exactly what you want. And let's say for a, a news show, for example. Um, you have maybe 10 news across an hour, I don't know. And you can see by way of the people reactions which of those news were more engaging, engaging for them. And maybe you can, you can give them more content about that specific news. Maybe you identify all these for your second edition, and your second edition is going to be more, be, gonna be more focused on that. Um, is what newspapers have uh, right now with their websites, that television is still not, not able to do it until now, that these technologies enable you to identify what's going on out there. And the more TV networks um, promote the use of these tools, the more they're going to be used. So the more benefit they're going to take from them. Mm. At the end, it's a virtual cir uh, circle. Um, that is a win-win situa situation. Right? People well, get more connected, networks get more feedback, and 
and can improve the content. One of the things I'm surprised around TV is really that today it's incredible. If you commute by car at home, you commute and you listen to something on the news on radio, and then you get home and you watch TV and you get the exact same piece of news. And then you get the paper tomorrow morning and you get the exact same piece of news. Uh, and what I'm surprised is that what, what I would like is that it would find out if I'm interested, it would show me more and, and in depth. And if I'm not interested, then just skip it, please, from the show and show me the other things I'm interested in. It, it's really incredible that we're all treated as, as a sort of a bunch of fools and being fed the same stuff. Where I'm all, I've seen this piece of news three times. Can you give me in depth? And I mean, one of the things with news is that, I mean, take, take Libya, for example, just with the whole conflict in Libya. There have been weeks where you've been wondering, oh, has the conf is this a conflict over in Libya? Because, I mean, the stock market went down or something. So you kind of forgot big pieces of the news, which might be much more relevant to you. So I think that is also something you can follow a thread. I think that's definitely going to be... when I think because TV is still acting analog. Mm -hmm. And it's just incredible, mm -hmm. even though it is digital. And I think one, uh, another metaphor that I can think of to just support that answer was uh, when, when you think of the con conventional TV or the, the PC as a center of uh, our shelter or our abode, we can think of the old way of looking at PCs and TVs as being our big home with a garden in front of it and then there's a little tool shed somewhere far uh, from that uh, home where you went to your tool shed to accomplish certain tasks, you were fixing something, you were making a phone call, conceptually speaking. But now that, that workshop is growing in size, it's got wheels on it and it's moving around with us, we're carrying it around with us. And in doing so, like the, the talk that's happening in the parallel room, talking about the internet of things, we're also becoming makers and publishers of content constantly because now, earlier we just went to the tool shed to do a few dirty things and then came back to our beautiful clean homes and then just lived there, but I think now more and more of us are moving away from our big, uh, so comfortable homes and living in our workshops with our little tools and devices, and in doing so, we're making the content, uh, our, our homes are becoming our workshops, and mm -hmm. I don't know the metaphor is quite, I'm still forming it as I'm saying it, but we can talk about it more, and I think that's just how perhaps in one way our uh, television experience is going to change. It's not going to be in a, in a living room in our home somewhere, but perhaps we'll be watching it uh, in different contexts while we're making things, sharing things, and uh, fixing things on the go. So, yeah. Yeah, well, that's already happening. Is yeah. um, Most people I know watch TV on their PC. Mm. Anytime they want. And mm. maybe they heard the news. They heard that on the news... It was some story, and they search for it on YouTube. So people are already experiencing television, experiencing television in different ways, in different devices. But it's uh, still produced the same old but way. But it's still produced the same yeah. old way. So actually, that's the, we're two minutes overdue. I hope it's been an extremely interesting uh, time. Are there any sort of final questions or, or exclamations from the audience? Otherwise, it's fine to applaud now for the two <laughs> nice gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me.